Hello guys, I'm back. Today we are going to discuss the Yamamoto et al. study and I will try to evaluate the study as I detail it to you. We will discuss the study both in terms of the methodology and ethics. To understand this study, first of all, you need to understand what altruism is. For those who do not know what it is, the International Encyclopedia of the Social Sciences define altruism as a motivational state with the goal of increasing another's welfare. In simple terms, it's the process of helping another without expecting anything in return, not out of obligation or duty, and it is widely debated whether altruism is even possible at all. But many believe that humans help each other because they are capable of understanding another person's emotions and act accordingly. This is called the theory of mind. So how does this work in non-humans? There are studies that show that non-human primates help each other and share food without any direct benefits. This particular study looks into how chimpanzees help con specifics depending on their needs. Also, they are specifically interested in targeted behavior, which is care based on the need or situation of others. Let's look into the background of this study. I suggest that you have a clear understanding of the background because they can sometimes ask you to explain it as a part of paper one. So until the study, there were very few research focusing specifically on theory of mind in animals or their understanding of others and acting accordingly. In the beginning of pa this paper, they are giving evidence of mixed research on how helping chimpanzees are and some studies show that they do not help spontaneously and some direct requests might be required for this. The question is, is this because theory of mind doesn't exist in chimpanzees? Or in other words, is it because they don't understand the needs of others? This is what Yamamoto et al. study is trying to understand. If chimpanzees can actually understand their conspecific needs and help based on that. Now let's see how they managed to find this. They use five chimpanzees socially housed at the Primate Research Institute in Kyoto University, Japan. You can see that there are names of six chimpanzees mentioned in the paper. I and Pan, sorry, I, Pan and Chloe, who are mothers. Aimu, Pal and Cleo, who are the children. Now, looking at the data, we can see that data from Chloe, the mother, was not used in the study. So they practically recorded five chimpanzees. The chimpanzees were paired as mother and child and they were placed in an experimental situation where one has to give the other tools which will help the other get a juice reward. Which means that one potentially acts as a helper and the other a potential recipient. These chimpanzees were tested in two adjacent experimental booths. The size of the booths are mentioned in the paper and they can ask you to explain the apparatus used in the study and if you want to be precise, you can mention the size of the booths used. So while the chimpanzees are in the booths, a tray of seven objects, which are a stick, a straw, a hose, a chain, a rope, a brush, and a belt were given to the helper chimpanzee. There were seven objects at all times, including the stick and the straw. Chimpanzees either needed the stick or the straw in order to get the juice box in the given situation. The helper chimpanzee and the recipient chimpanzees are separated by a wall with a hole in it. The hole will allow them to give the tool to the recipe and chimpanzee. Now, let's look at the experimental design of the study. They use two conditions. The first one is called the CANSI condition, in which the wall between the two booths are transparent and the helper chimpanzee can see the other chimpanzee in the other booth. And the second condition is called the cannot see condition, where the helper chimpanzee cannot see what is happening in the adjacent booth as the wall between them 
is opaque and the helper chimpanzee can only give the tools through a small hole um, between them. So this means that in the can see condition, the helper chimpanzee can see the situation the other chimpanzee is in and, and help accordingly. Since the same chimpanzees are repeated um, in the second condition as well, this design is called a repeated meshes design. So you can argue that there can be a fatigue effect or even carryover effect from the re repetition of task, but it gives you more reliability um, as it controls the factors that can cause variability between the subjects. Let's look at the design in more detail. So the researchers repeated the CANSEE condition for 48 trials in which 24 trials were stroyer situation and the other 24 were stickier situation and they repeated it with uh, in a cannot see condition uh, just the same amount of stroyer's condition and stickier's condition and then they again repeated the CANSEE condition uh, just to confirm the difference between these two um, with the same number of trials. And while all this was happening, they used three video cameras in order to record all of this. One thing that they controlled across the participants is the familiarization of the objects used in the study. Before the experiment began, they made sure all the chimpanzees were familiar with the objects used in the study in the same way. They exposed them with the objects for eight five-minute trials. During this time, the participants could freely manipulate these objects in the experimental booth. So what did they really find from this? So, um, what did you find from this? Uh, let's see the can see condition uh, when introduced the first time. Uh, the transparent, where you have the transparent panel um, between the helper monkey and the recipient monkey. Object offer at this phase is like 90.8%, which is an improvement from the familiarization phase where they just manipulated the objects and there was no motivation to help the partner uh, at all. So during that time when they were in the familiarization phase, the object offer was like 5% and it increased to 90.8%. What does this say? This shows that there is a... Uh, that a direct request is important for the onset of a targeted behavior. Except for Pan, all the four chimpanzees offered the stick or straw, which are the potential tool to get the juice box. The percentage of help offered by each chimpanzee is mentioned below. Except for Pan, Pan was more obsessed with the brush and when the brush was removed he offered to give the right tool. Looking at the straw or stick tool transfers alone they specifically selected the stick in stick use situation and straw for the straw use situation. So this shows that they specifically understood which tool their partner required. Now moving on to the cannot see condition they offered to help regardless of whether they chose the right tool or not, they still helped. This shows that they can distinguish the potential tool from the useless ones, probably as a result of their experience from the previous experiments. The significant difference, though, was that the chimpanzees who chose exactly stick when the partner needed stick and straw when the partner needed straw in can see conditions stopped doing that. Except for Aimu, who peeked through the hole um, that is present in the experimental booth in order to understand what the partner needs and responded accordingly. This shows that the chimpanzee helpers understood their partner's goals only when they could visually appreciate their partner's situation. IMO's behavior is a further confirmation on that. The researchers repeated the can see condition once again. During this time, they just wanted to make sure 
that whatever they found was not due to the experimental order of the two conditions. In this condition, I, Cleo, and Pal offer the potential tool more than the non-tool object. This confirms that the chimpanzees demonstrated flexible targeted helping with an understanding of which tool their partner needed when they could wishfully assess their partner's situation. So with this, I am winding up my video and uh, I know that the evaluation part is still not complete, but I'm expecting to upload another video soon with the evaluation, um, both methodology and ethics, ethics specifically when animals are used in the study. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching.